This is 15.3 adding and subtracting radical expressions. When we're dealing with radical expressions, in order to add or subtract them, they have to be like terms, just like when we're adding or subtracting monomials. In number one, we have six square root of x plus three square root of x. Since they both have a square root of x, these are like terms, so we can just add or subtract the coefficients. When we combine these two terms, we get 9 square root of x. The square root of x part stays the same. We only add or subtract the numbers in front, the coefficients. In number 2, we have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. Well, if you'll remember, if we're adding or subtracting monomials, and we try to add the terms x plus x, there's an understood one in front of the x's. So when we add those terms, we get 2x. Well, it's the same way when we're dealing with radicals. There's an understood one in front of every radical if you don't see one. So in this case, this is the same as 1 square root of 2 plus 1 square root of 2, which would give us 2 square root of 2. In number 3, we have three terms, 5 square root of 7 plus 2 minus 11 square root of 7. Well, these two terms are like terms, so we can combine those. And the 2 doesn't have a like term. So it doesn't matter what order you put these terms. Um, you can either put the 2 first or you can combine the radicals and put them first. I'm going to go ahead and bring down the 2 and then combine my radicals. 5 square root of 7 minus 11 square root of 7 would give me a negative 6 square root 7. Now what happens when we have terms that are not alike? First we want to simplify our um, radicands and see if we can get our radicands to be the same. Well, if you'll remember, the way that we simplify our radicands is to find the biggest perfect square factor in that radical. So in 45, the biggest perfect square is 9. 9 times 5 is the same as 45. And then for 20, the biggest perfect square is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So if we take out our biggest perfect square factors, the square root of 9 is 3, and the 5 stays under because it's not a perfect square, plus we have 3, and the biggest perfect square in 20 was 4. The 4 comes out as a 2, and the 5 stays under. Well, remember, if we already have a number outside of the radical, and we bring something else outside of the radical, we multiply those two numbers together. So this would give us 3 squared of 5 plus 6, because we're going to multiply that 3 and the 2, square root of 5. Well, now we have like terms, so we can add the numbers in front. And that gives us 9 square root 5. Okay, once again, we have terms that are not alike, so we're going to simplify each radical and see um, if we can get radicands to be the same. For the square root of 8, the biggest perfect square is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. For the square root of 9, that's already a perfect square, so we just take the square root. The square root of 9 is 3. And for 18, the biggest perfect square is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. And once again, we have a perfect square. The square root of 81 is 9, so this just comes out of the radical as a 9. For those terms that are not perfect squares, we're going to take out the perfect square factors. The square root of 4 is 2, so the square root of 8 turns into 2 square root 2. 
I'm going to bring down my 3. And then for the square root of 18, that 9 comes out as a 3. And the 2 stays under the radical. Minus 9. Okay, let's see what like terms we have. This and this are like terms, and then of course all our whole numbers are like terms. Again, it doesn't matter what order we put them in. We can combine the radicals first or the whole numbers first. If I combine the radicals first, 2 squared of, th two, squared of 2 plus 3 squared of 2 gives me 5 square root of 2. And negative 3 and negative 9 are a negative 12. So if you wrote it this way, or if you wrote negative 12 plus 5 square root of 2, that would be okay also. Here we have cube roots, and they're not like terms, so let's see if we can get them to be like terms. For the cube root of 8x cubed, 8 is a perfect cube. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of x cubed is x. Minus, we have a 2 that's already on the outside, and then the cube root of x cubed again is x. Now we have like terms, and 2x minus 2x would be 0. In this last example, we have fractions. And just remember, anytime we have a fraction under a radical, it's the same as having each part of the fraction under a radical. So when I write it like this, you see that the denominators are perfect squares. So we can go ahead and take those out of the radical. The square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 9 is 3. So this could also be written as 1 fifth square root of 2 plus 1 third square root of 2. Well, that makes these like terms with 1 fifth and 1 third being the coefficients. But we can't add them together yet because these are fractions. And when we're adding or subtracting fractions, we have to have like terms. So we need to get like terms in our fractions, and the least common denominator between 5 and 3 would be 15. Well, in order to make my denominator 15 in the first fraction, I would need to multiply by 3. And remember, whatever we do to one part of the fraction, we have to do to the other part of the fraction. And then for 1 third, we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator times 5. So this gives me... 3 over 15 square root 2 plus 5 over 15 square root 2. And when I add those together, I get 8 over 15 square root 2 as my answer.